All right, so here we go. Can everyone see my screen? Karen, good job. Thank you, Karen. All right, so welcome to the orientation meeting for the TV production and interactive media design classes. I am Mrs. Wise, and I am a part of the Information Technology Academy at, the, at Anthos. And um, just already we have set up some, you know, etiquette for our Zoom meeting, because some of us, this is maybe the first time we're doing it, or maybe it's the, you know, 30 or 40th time we've had a Zoom meeting. But we want to keep our mics muted. Mrs. Gilly already said she'll be keeping track of questions in the um, chat area. And uh, this meeting is being recorded, so I will make it available um, as a YouTube link for people to watch that maybe weren't able to make it tonight. Or if uh, you want some more information to share with somebody else in your family. And the PowerPoint that we're going to be going through, I also will make available as a Google Doc and share that with uh, you guys early next week with email. So that's kind of our etiquette. So welcome, welcome, welcome students and parents to our orientation meeting for the career uh, and technical education classes that you've decided to be a part of, TV production and interactive media design. The goals for this meeting are to give you some basic information about the classes and our department and procedural information that we're going to be working with as we start school. And um, normally, we would have this meeting in our auditorium at the Career Academy building at Anthos building, where you would get to meet the teachers and you'd see other students and you get to go into the classroom. Um, but, you know, that's not where we're at. That is not what is happening. We are in a different world. And let me see if I can get my slide to go forward. Hmm, there it goes. So this year's a little different, right? We've experienced many challenges and the last few months have just given us all kinds of different things to ponder. Um, humor is one of my favorite things sometimes and especially with memes. So you can maybe appreciate some of the humor there. But um, we want parents and teachers, our parents and students to understand that our district and the Career Academy staff, support staff and teachers, we're all doing our best to make this school year a positive and exciting year for uh, everyone that's gonna be joining in the TV production and interactive media design class. So if we were in person, we would have an opportunity for you to meet some of the other teachers. You've already had a chance to meet Mrs. Gilly and um, just kind of go through the list of some other teachers that work in our department, the IT Academy. Mr. McKenstry teaches programming, cybersecurity mm -hmm. and network administration. Ms. Shea is our IT support teacher. And then of course, yes. you know, you're here because of me. I'm in room 205. Morning, morning, yes, sir. TV production one and TV production two is what I teach. And I have my class in the morning for TV production from 920 to 1205. Yes. And interactive media design happens from 1245 to 330, which is a PM class. And um, I want to show you a video. So we're going to see if this video will play. It's a nice introduction to our department. And just a reminder, if you are not muted, you'll want to mute your um, your phone or your laptop. But here we go. I'm going to play this video to introduce and let you see a little bit, since we can't be there in person, our, our building and, and our other classrooms. Here we go. The sound is kind of weird on this end. Probably the same problem I had, Mrs. White. Can't hear it? No. All right, Mrs. Gilly, I think I heard you say you cannot hear it. No, I cannot. So maybe a voiceover like I did. I will voice over, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you're seeing a little bit about our, um, 
our department, there's our TV studio, which many of you will have an opportunity to see, and there's Mrs. Gilly's room for graphic design. Um, and as it lists out there, those are our department classes, computer repair going on there with Mr. McKenzie students. Some things that Mrs. Gilly students work on in the graphic design class. And then there's our class for interactive media design and TV production. The room's actually set up a little bit differently now that we've got a two-year-old video, but you see some students working on their websites um, and some animation software that we use and drawing pads that we have available to us in the classroom. So just a little glimpse. Sorry, the audio is not going, not being heard. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. <laughs> so I apologize, one of the challenges we have to get uh, better at sharing video, at least I do, so here we go. Um, all right, so that was just a little bit of a look at what some of the building looks like. And now we're gonna move into some of the more procedural type of things, because when we start on August 13th, we're gonna be in the blend of learning schedule. And TV production meets, as I said, 9.20 to 12.05. Interactive media design is an afternoon class from 12.45 to 3.30. And um, you guys have already been broken into a group one and group two. And I believe that the majority of you know which group you're in. And I have not been into my power school to see what, you know, the names of the students that are in group one or group two. As soon as I see that information, and if you have questions because you're maybe not sure if you're in group one or group two, um, I will be sharing that via email. So keep Mrs. Wise, for someone, that. someone was asking, and I think this slide covers it, but are we supposed to come to Anthos on Thursday, August 13th, if you are virtual? Right, so um, just let me point out that uh, we are the blended learning schedule, so Part of the week you're in the classroom and part of the week you're at home. So if you are in group one, you'll come to our building on August 13th to either the nine o'clock, 920 class or the 1245 class, depending if you're TV production or interactive media design. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in group two, like the slide says there, you'll be in the building. Um, and, but I, so group two will be in the building on August 14th. Now, if you're in group two, you will be tuning in with Zoom and checking Power School on that first day also. So everybody will be engaged. So I hope that answers that question. That, that is kind of confusing to say. But um, so on August 13th, half of you will be in my room and the other half of you will be joining us uh, via a Zoom meeting that I'll be sending invites to. And then on- So yeah, if they're group two, they do not come on the 13th. They only go virtual. Correct. And it's virtual, yes, thank you. Okay. All right, so I, I gave you more information about how the week of August 17th, group one goes Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then group two will go Tuesday, Friday. That might be a little bit too much information right now, but that's there, and um, that's part of the information for you to know once we get past the 13th and the 14th what the next week's going to look like. And we alternate Wednesdays. So that is the blended idea. Some days you're in the classroom, some days you're on Zoom and Power School, and we, we alternate Wednesdays. So what does that Zoom meeting thing mean? So when you're not, when your group's not in my classroom, you are on a Zoom meeting. And the meeting is not going to be the entire class period because we meet for a long time. My morning class goes from nine. 9.20 to, to 12.05, that would be a long time to do a Zoom meeting. So it's gonna be more of a check-in point, a, a way for me to take attendance, a way for me to just make sure that we're all kind of on the same page, even though some of you might be at home and some of you might be in the classroom. And we are going to be establishing, you know, just kind of checkpoints for that Zoom meeting. And one thing that we've already established is we'd like you to have the camera on 
when we first log into and get into a Zoom meeting to uh, show engagement and so that I can you know, take attendance officially. So if you're in the remote learning mode, if it's your day to be at home, um, at 9.45 a.m. is when you're going to tune into the Zoom uh, meeting. And see, I'm a, I'm a TV teacher, I'm saying tune in. I don't think you tune in with your computers, <laughs> you guys connect with your computers. Um, and then 1.15 is when the Zoom meeting is gonna happen in the afternoon if you are a remote learner that day. But, um, you know, be patient with the process because as we work through the first week or so, you know, getting used to what that means and what, how you're gonna get used to using PowerSchool and using email and all the resources that we have in the classroom to continue with the school year, you know, we will be doing a lot of learning uh, and we'll need to be patient with that. So with the blended learning, just something to keep in mind, you know, those resources that you need to be successful in the classroom. So all students, my TV production and my interactive media design students will have a one year subscription as soon as school starts um, to the Adobe Creative Cloud. And that subscription will allow you to have access to that software either in the classroom or when you're in remote learning. And as we work through the laptop situation, because if you're a Fort Wayne Community School student or if you're a student in another school district, you might have a laptop that your school is providing you or you might even have your own personal laptop. We're gonna need to check you know, what those laptops are capable of doing. Adobe Creative Cloud is a pretty uh, intense piece of software. Um, I know for TV production, Adobe Rush will pretty much run on uh, anything, because I know you can use Adobe Rush to edit on your cell phone, but if you're an interactive media design student, the Animate software will not run on your cell phone. So we're gonna be working through that, but the good news is, is that you will have for one year that Adobe Creative Cloud software, and you'll be able to use it in the classroom and at home with your laptops or your home computers. Because that piece of software, that Adobe Creative Cloud is a big part of both TV production and interactive media design. Another resource that we have is that we'll be using textbooks, of course. So we'll have some textbooks that you'll get assigned that first day that you are in the building, if you're group one or group two, um, that you'll be able to, to carry with you or take home. Some of them I have digital access to, but some of them are just hard copies. And all Fort Wayne Community School students already know that they've got their Power School username and password to be able to get in and uh, be a part of what is presented by the teacher on there for assignments and how you submit assignments. If you're outside of Fort Wayne Community Schools, we'll be getting you your username and password so that you'll be able to log on that first day that you're in the building and we can make sure that you know how to um, get into PowerSchool and we can move forward with that. All right, so that was just kind of uh, an introduction to that concept of blended learning. And it, it can be a little confusing, but you know, we will, be able to work through it and you know we will be communicating a lot between now and August 13th so you'll be hopefully feeling really comfortable about what day you're going to be where and what things you'll have as far as resources with laptops and that type of thing. All right so now let's just address uh, I guess the elephant in the room right COVID-19 has caused us to be in a different state as we open up our buildings and we get you guys to be able to come to the Career Academy and uh, do your career and technical education. So here's just a checklist of some things that we know. These are things that we know we're gonna be moving forward with. Um, everyone must wear a mask in the Anthos building and in the classroom. That's teachers, students, visitors, anyone that comes in the building and you have to keep it on at all times. Um, and our desk, there's a picture there on the left, that's me in our classroom. And it looks like maybe there's not too much space between those computers, but if you can imagine, the room's a pretty good size, and we'll have 10 kids in the morning and 10 kids in the afternoon. The other kids will be online uh, when we're in the classroom, and we'll be able to seat uh, ourselves every other desk. So there'll be plenty of room. That desk that you get assigned is your desk for the, for the year at this point, and no one else will be sitting in that desk. So you know that's a nice thing, and we'll have social distancing in effect. Um, We'll have assigned restroom breaks and trying to keep the traffic. We won't have a break. Some of my some of my TV two students are probably in this meeting and 
we used to have breaks where a group of students would gather, you know, 50 or 60 students would gather in the break room. That's not going to be happening, but we will still need to figure out how to get students to the uh, restroom in a safe way and to also give you an opportunity to wash your hands because frequent washing of hands is encouraged. New water fountains were installed right outside my room that allow you to fill up a water bottle. Uh, workstations and the equipment will be sanitized frequently and daily. There'll be hand sanitizer stations in the classroom. And Port Wayne Community Schools uh, has nurses and we have a nurse in our building and she has provided some information about screening for parents. It's a PDF file that I'll put on my PowerSchool page so it'll appear before August 13th. But parents, you might wanna look over that because it will have some things for you to think about and question as you're making a decision as to whether or not your student you know, should come to school if they would be feeling under the weather or that type of thing. All right, so that's kind of the, the procedural stuff. Now let's really talk about the classes because that's what I'm excited. I can't wait to introduce both my TV production and interactive media design students to our, our curriculum and start really getting to learn our skills and doing projects together and doing what you know what we have a passion for hopefully that it's something we're really excited about so first i'm going to talk about tv production and then i promise interactive media design students you will be talked about too um, so tv production one and tv production two this is a class for students who enjoy the aspect of creating videos tv students will create numerous videos some projects are teacher based and others are student driven we do competitions, the Skills USA and the 10 Day Film Challenge are competitions that we do second semester. But as we're moving through the first part of the school year, we're building all those skills so that when we get ready to do competitions, we can compete. And we've had kids do very well at Skills USA. And um, this past year, we were able to get the 10 Day Film Challenge in, and one of our groups placed in the top 30. And that's out of like 130 schools around the country around the globe <laughs> that competed in the 10 day film challenge. So I was very excited for that, that to happen. So I have links there. I'm not going to click on them, but I will encourage you when you get this PowerPoint to click and check out skills USA. It's a student organization that uh, you'll have an opportunity to join and compete in. And then some information about the 10 day film challenge. TV production students will learn all four phases of the production process. So when you look at those four phases, pre-production means that you're gonna be learning about scripting and storyboarding. You're gonna be learning about taking that creative idea that you have up here in your head and being able to get it onto paper so that you can share it with others so that you can bring it to life. So we will learn a lot about pre-production. Then we move into production. So we have digital cameras, tripods, microphones, lighting equipment. Um, we have some really expensive digital cameras, some DSLR cameras, and then we have some less expensive cameras that everybody will have access to. And even as we're moving through this blended learning experience, we'll have some cameras that you'll be able to check out and take home with you to be able to do some projects and to get uh, that skills built up with using those cameras and tripods and microphones. So production, you're gonna have plenty of experience there. Post-production, really important editing. As I'd mentioned, Adobe product is what we use in the classroom. So you'll be able to use Rush, hopefully on your laptops, maybe even on your cell phones, and Adobe Premiere Pro. Definitely in the classroom is where we'll be seeing the majority of Adobe Premiere Pro editing happening. And then the final phase of production is distribution, which means that a lot of our videos get shown on cable channel LTV54, which is a Comcast channel. And then I have a YouTube channel that we post and, and you know, distribute to the world to see on YouTube. And I encourage uh, TV production students to have a YouTube channel also as we move through the school year so they can keep track of the great projects that they finish and kind of build a little demo reel, if you will, on their YouTube channel. And probably some of you already have YouTube channels, I'm sure. So the last thing I'll say about TV production one is that projects are big. You know, me sitting here talking or reading from a book is not the best thing for you to do to get better at TV production. Doing projects. So we will do numerous projects throughout the year and they are summative grades and they have specific requirements and a rubric to go with a majority of the projects that I assign. But we'll do public service announcements, we'll make informational videos, interviews, we'll do some news, we'll study about um, the news and what goes into making a newscast, what goes into the newsworthiness factors of you know, what makes the news. We'll be doing 
uh, training videos, spoofs, everybody's favorite ones, comedy, drama, community projects, short films, commercials, multi-camera studio productions, because we do have a studio, very nice studio right next to our classroom that we're gonna be able to go into, mostly second semesters when we do our news and newscast um, type of work. And I provided the link for you to check out the YouTube channel. When you get this uh, PowerPoint, click that, check it out and see some of the things that have been done um, over the last, well, I think I started YouTube in 2010. So for the last 10 years, what we've been posting. So TV production two, I have five students that um, are coming back as TV production two students. I consider them leaders for our classroom. Um, they want to come back and learn even more skills and do more projects because they're serious about TV production. Maybe they wanna go into filmmaking. Maybe they wanna go into the news industry. Maybe they want to work in sports journalism. So they will be joining uh, TV production one but they are leaders and they will be doing lots of projects. And I've already got some great client projects lined up for them. I don't know if anybody watched the Some Good News um, that John Krasinski, I always have to look at his name, did during the first couple of months of the um, COVID-19 kind of like, you know, shut down. I loved how he did that. So I'd re I really think that we could kind of do something similar to that, even though he's not in production, it's actually been sold. He's making, Viacom, you know, a good agreement to take up the, the reins and do some good news. But we'll, we'll TV2, you're going to be doing something like that, having some fun, having it be a little bit more lighthearted than uh, gloom and doom news. Um, certification, TV2, guys, you're going to be jumping right into that because we didn't get to finish that second semester. And a new uh, piece of software and um, process, Sneak on the Lot, which is going to help us build some skills USA digital cinema skills in a very creative way. So I did provide a link there for students in TV2 to check that out when they take a look at that. So TV production, that is all about you. And I hope that anyone that's joining this meeting and is a TV production student, you saw some things that trip your trigger, as they would say, that will make you think, yeah, that's gonna be uh, something that I'd like to learn and something I'd like to pursue because we need kids be behind the camera and in front of the camera. We need students that can operate equipment and feel comfortable with editing, and we also need you to feel ready to be in front of the camera too. So interactive media design is the class I teach in the afternoon. That class meets from 12.45 to 3.30. This class is for students who enjoy the aspect of creating graphics, websites, and animations. IMD creates and uses text, photographs, vector graphics, sound animation, and video clips for digital uh, design. And during this course, my IMD students will be learning a lot of software. We'll still dabble with fireworks, even though that's kind of going away, but we still have a way to get it with our Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, so we'll be, for the first time in my class anyway, doing some serious Photoshop learning. Adobe Rush, so that you can know how to edit some video clips that you might need for your projects. We'll be learning Animate and Dreamweaver. So we are very busy in interactive media design with our computers and learning software. But you learn all that software so that you can make some projects. So that the projects that we assign that we work with throughout the, the year are where you get to bring your creativity to life um, and your skills to life. So we do uh, a lot of work with graphic vectors Fireworks will build and allow you to build vector graphics and you can do bitmap manipulation in um, Photoshop and in Fireworks. So we'll be doing a lot of that first semester. Uh, we'll probably do Dreamweaver second semester. At this point, that's what I'm looking at, flipping my uh, curriculum a little bit because I feel like Dreamweaver is probably not the best thing to start off with this um, school year so we're going to flip it a bit but you will learn dreamweaver second semester and you'll be building multiple websites in dreamweaver uh, animate is the software that allows you to draw and put movement to objects and put sound and uh, interactivity so when we're learning animate we learn the principles of animation and there are 12. we learn we will make some interactive educational projects some e-cards some animated logos some business cards web banners and informational graphics so we make all kinds of really creative stuff with that software. And I'm gonna show you an example of a Spark um, 
Spark is an Adobe product that both TV production and interactive media design students will be able to use to build portfolios, to do some reflective learning and journaling as we go through um, our, our school year. So TV students will get a chance to do something in Spark as well as uh, interactive media design students. So let me see how I'm able to possibly show this here. So this is Jordan Reynolds. He was in Mrs. Gilley's class last year, but in my class, um, his junior year, and this is his portfolio. And it's in Spark, you're just adding text and images. So here's an example of something he created in Fireworks. You can see- Mrs. Um, Rice? Yes. You, um, you have to switch screens that, were, that you're sharing because it didn't pull up his. So you have to go to the top where it says like share screen and pick another screen to share because it's still on your slideshow. Oh, so I click stop sharing. Yeah, and then go back to share screen and pick the, the Jordan's work then. I am learning. Yeah, you would think it would just show what you're linking to, but it doesn't. Okay. So is everybody still awake? Are you getting any questions, Mrs. Gilly? <laughs> there you go, now we can see it and no questions yet. Okay, all right, so interactive media design students. This is something that we would be created in Fireworks. It's a, as he talks right here, he made this graphic in Fireworks and sometimes, you know, we pick certain topics. So he had to make something that kind of uh, was like a Thanksgiving greeting that you could possibly see this graphic maybe in a website or even on a video uh, in a, um, news program or something like that if they needed some graphics because you you would not believe how many great jobs there are in the TV industry where they need people that can do graphic work um, anyway he that's all bit that's all vector shapes that he created and here's another example of something he created for CTE month with fireworks and here's kind of a combination of maybe some Photoshop digital manipulation bitmap manipulation and adding text and having vector shapes and background. Our Dreamweaver, these are just screenshots, but this shows you um, a website page that he would have created, an HTML uh, page for a website that would have been created in Dreamweaver. So he has to know how to do the text and how to place the text, how to bring in the images. So we use Dreamweaver to learn how to create root folders and to create uh, linkable HTML pages that you would see on the internet that you would see for, in this case, um, a pretend gallery called the Waterman Gallery, like an art gallery. And here is his animate um, project, his cartoon yourself. And he's got a little business card that he animated and then the personal logo. So um, animate allows you to put movement I don't think you're going to hear any sound, but I'm going to play this for you because this should show you a little bit of movement that he created with Animate. Um, and he would have drawn that hand. He drew the, the colors and brought the text in there. And that would be something that someone could put on their website. And I'll play a little bit of his cartoon you just so you can kind of see. Um, his drawing skills were... When he came into the classroom, Jordan did not like to draw, amazingly enough, but you know, he has drawing as one of his interests, but he wouldn't consider himself like maybe an artist type of drawer. But um, in his Cartoon New project, you know, he had to present some of his interests. And uh, obviously, I don't know, I bet there's some people on here that did some gaming over the last four months. So drawing and gaming and music, those are usually interests that my students have as well as many other high school students. But that was all kind of created by his own hand and then put uh, with some movement to it in, in Animate. So I'm gonna go back to my screen and then I'm, I see we might have another question. No. So we're gonna go back to here. No questions yet, but okay. just remember to ask them. Oh. Um, someone's asking about, will buses be available? Oops, I just lost it. One second. Will buses be available to take kids to and from FWCS schools to Anthos? That's a great question. Um, 
Karen, do you, do you know for sure? Or Tamara, are you still there? Do you know for yes, sure? Yes, I'm still here. What, yes, what we, we will have buses from Fort Wayne Community Schools and they will run on that group one and group two schedule and provide social distancing. There are a lot of rules that go with that um, to keep students safe while riding the bus. Okay, so hopefully that answered that question. I do have an addendum that I forgot, if I may. Sure. Um, so afternoon students, typically, um, if you are coming from a Fort Wayne Community Schools High School and you will be um, coming to us then in the afternoon, you will have first lunch at your home school and then board the bus to come down for our 1245 class. And in the mornings, um, we also offer bus transportation right away from your home school. Okay. So hopefully that made some sense. But one thing I do know, like if you're an afternoon student, if you're an interactive media design student, class is over at 3.30. Um, but usually you wait just a little bit to get your bus to get back to your home school. And I believe your home school gets out, what, at 4.09? So, you know, you're, you're getting out a little early, it feels like. But then if you're riding the bus, you're, you know, using that time to get back to your home school so that you can then catch a bus from your home school, like if you go to Snyder or uh, Northside, to wherever you go next. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense. And it All also right. affords you the opportunity to play sports and to return to your home school in time. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. And, and Mrs. Wise, you had an additional question. Are the projects in the TV production individual projects? Huh, that's a really good question. Um, some of them are individual, uh, and then some of them are group because I don't know too many people that make TV shows or newscasts or films just by themselves. <laughs> you usually have to be able to, you know, have a pretty, you know, movies. They have hundreds of people on their, on, in their crew. So there will be some by yourself, but then there will be some that we work together as a group. All right, so the next piece of information applies to both TV production and interactive media design. We do have what we refer to as a professional grade that we work with on our students throughout the school year to kind of focus on your work ethic and behavior. And what I mean by behavior is like things that you do that will make you a better person as you move to being more adult-like or when you get ready to go to college or when you get that job, okay? So we are a career academy. We wanna make sure that we're giving you some of those soft skills to be employable, to be you know someone that we hear from industry, we hear from TV stations, or we hear from graphic design companies that they're saying, yeah, we want people to have these good skills, but we also need them to have a good work ethic. So let's talk about that first. So, so we will have some opportunities to kind of just help you build those skills to be a, a good time manager. You know, especially with this uh, blended learning, you're gonna have to really be able to use your time wisely as you do your homeschool work and your work that you do at the Career Academy. Being present is really important. So uh, absences, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but we want you to be present. When you miss one of my classes, that's three hours. And if you're, if you're you know, gone for three hours, you will, you will lose a lot of information that is really hard to kind of catch up. So we really need you to be present as much as possible. Be prepared to learn and be engaged. Attendance, like I said, really important. Um, and We'll be taking attendance in the classroom when your group's in the room, and then we'll be taking attendance through Zoom. So if, for whatever reason, you are absent, you need to make sure your parents are calling the number there at that 467-1015, um, because that's the number that will allow your parents to let people know that you're not gonna be in attendance that day. And if you're not able to make the Zoom meeting because you're sick or something's come up where you're not in the, in the home or whatever for a doctor's appointment, a parent will need to call and report that as an absence as well. So we do need attendance to be taken very seriously. We also, during our professional grade, have what we call dress up. So after Labor Day, so not until after Labor Day, on the Wednesdays that you're in the classroom, we're going to ask you to dress up. And not just to torture you and make you dress up, but because we want you to have um, some clothes in your closet to fit and that you can put on that look professional, that look business casual, something that you could wear to an internship or maybe an interview or to a college visit or when a client comes in, we want you to be able to dress nice. So here's some examples of some students in the past that are in their professional dress, uh, which pretty much 
which means collared shirt, no t-shirts, not jeans on your uh, bottom half, but either belted slacks or pants or a skirt, you know, whatever, you know, is not jeans um, or shorts. And then dress shoes, not sneakers or flip-flops. So for guys, it might be, you know, a more hard-soled shoe. And for girls, we don't say wear your high heels because those might be kind of uncomfortable all day, but, you know, having a nice dress shoe. So that's going to happen after uh, Labor Day. Dress up day, part of our professional development. So in the classroom, we ask you to follow the, the rules of the classroom for your behavior. We ask you not to have food in the classroom. Um, so like, don't bring your breakfast in the morning to eat at the desks because food is not allowed in the classroom, but you can bring a water bottle. Don't bring the makeup or your hairbrush that you didn't have a chance to, to get all beautified before class because sitting at your desk and, and having that kind of stuff out is not good behavior for, for our classroom. It's not allowed. And really, you're not supposed to go to work you know, and be putting your makeup on and eating your breakfast when you're at your desk. You need to take care of that before you get there. And cell phones. Oh, cell phones, right? Cell phones, it's going to be hard. We've been addicted to them for the last four months. We're going to have to set them aside during class time. They should be off and, and not visible during class. Um, we do have a charging station in the classroom that people can use, but we're going to ask you not to use your phone. Have it off. Um, it could be taken away, but uh, we, we don't want to get there. We want you to be adult and be able to make decisions like an adult that you won't be distracted by that cell phone. Certification, this is the last kind of big push right here besides dual credit. Certification is an opportunity for you to receive um, from Adobe um, a certificate that says that you know this software and that you have employability skills in the software. It's a test that we take. And we usually take the test on the software either towards the end of first semester in uh, Animator Dreamweaver and Premiere Pro for TV production, we usually take that in the spring. And there is a fee for it. It's $35. It would be due sometime in October as we move through the fall. We'll send more information about that. But we pay for those tests to be provided to our students. I provided a link there so you could check out the CertiPort website. Um, Ms. Skilly explained it to her students really nicely. She said, if you have a certification in this software, it proves to people um, in the industry that you have skills that are employable skills that are skills that you really show you know how to use this software if they ask me hey does joe know how to use premiere pro i can say yeah they added some projects but they don't know me as a teacher person but if you have a certificate that does give you just a little bit more um of a leg up i guess would be the word in that process of learning the things that you learn in our classes with certification College credit, dual credit, we do have that opportunity for students, TV production and interactive media design students will first semester get three credits from Vincennes University in what's referred to as VCST 102, which is a basic communications class. And then second semester TV students will have an opportunity to get an additional three credits in VCST 140. So if you're adding that up, TV students, you can possibly have six dual credits and IMD, IMD students will have an opportunity to get three. But Vincennes University is who we get those credits through. You don't ever go there. You just keep working in the classroom. We do the paperwork to get you uh, enrolled in their dual credit. And at the end of the semester, you got your three credits. So sit there ready for you to use. They will be transferable to other state uh, universities and colleges. For example, um, Indiana Tech, Ball State, St. Francis, Ivy Tech. I just had a student contact me yesterday. She called me, hey, Mrs. Wise, I need to get my transcript because I'm going to Indiana Tech and I want to take advantage of the credits I got in your class and Mrs. Gilly's class. She had nine college credits that she was able to transfer from Vincennes University to Indiana Tech. That saved her money, saved her time. She didn't have to take those classes. You guys know that's a good deal if you can do that and if that's something that you know, you're working towards with going to college for your next step. Whew, so that was a lot. Um, almost uh, trying to keep you under an hour. <laughs> We're at 45 minutes. So questions and you can think about that for a minute. Um, also, this slide's giving you my contact information. I've been emailing and kind of gathering everybody's emails. But if parents, if you have not given me your email and phone number, please email them to me. So there's my uh, email to do that. 
So any questions? Are any of my TV2 students here? I, I don't know if I can make my... I'm here. And who is me? Who's I am here? Connor Jackson. Connor, there you are. Connor, you want to say anything? Well, and actually there's Nick. I see Nick. Connor and Nick, you guys want to say anything to these students that are coming into the Career Academy? Not just TV production, but you've been there for a year. Put you on the spot. Um, it's a great learning experience and it's a lot better than my homeschool, so. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, it is. It's different, right? It gets you kind of in a different situation, gives you some other opportunities. Nick, anything to say? No, I think Connor really did cover it. Right Connor there. said that. Okay, all right. Well, it's good to see you guys. And I know we have three others. I don't know if anybody else is able to join, but, you know, it's going to be an interesting start to our year, but. We will be learning all kinds of new skills and, and being positive. And I will say it, we'll have some fun. We do have some fun and creative fun in the classroom. So, all right. Well, if there are no other questions, Weiss. Um, you do have one question. Do students need to bring the laptops issued from school to class? And then I might make a note just about that return to learn. Um, thing that I showed online that's on the website that parents could maybe look at that as well. All right, so the first couple days that we're together, I wouldn't necessarily say that first day on Thursday or Friday, but that next week I'll be saying, yeah, let's bring our laptops at the school given you, bring them into my classroom so I can help you put uh, Creative Cloud on them if we can. We've been told that we don't think we're gonna be able to do that with some of the Fort Wayne Community School laptops. I don't know uh, for sure, but I'm, I think we'll be able to get Adobe Rush on those laptops, but I don't know. So that's kind of unknown. So I would say if you wanna bring them that first day that you're in the classroom, that'd be fine. But then we'll establish what we're gonna do as we move forward on laptops. Because I have computers in my classroom. So when you're in my classroom, you'll be using those computers. And we'll be able to save things on the cloud. So like if we're editing or if we're working on a project at home, you'll be able to save it to the cloud and be able to access it from my classroom as well as at home with your laptop. <clears throat> so hopefully that helps. And then Mrs. Gilly had um, a return to learn uh, link on the Fort Wayne Community School webpage would be a great thing for parents to go take a look at. It's a pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, lengthy document but it does answer a lot of questions that you might have about this process of returning to learn. It's from our new superintendent, Dr. Daniel. And, um, you know, we're gonna be actually as teachers in uh, workshops and training and getting our classes ready <clears throat> over the next few days. So, you know, we'll, we'll be figuring it out. We'll, we're gonna do our best to figure it out, but I know if you have questions or concerns, don't feel, don't, don't worry, ask. I'd rather have you ask questions, parents and students, than to, to be wondering what the heck. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, Mrs. Wise, uh, two other questions. Okay. One was, um, could they bring in their personal laptop? Um, and then along those same lines, do we have to get the issued laptop if we have a newer computer at home? And I don't know if you know the answer, but I, was, I have been reading some things on FWCS. So your personal laptop won't get on our servers at, at the district from what I've been reading, um, but we probably need to verify that with the district. That's what I had read. I don't know if you have something else. Um, I haven't heard anything about that, but that's a great question. So, um... We'll, we'll kind of figure that out too. So whoever asked that question, if you want to email that to me also, and then as we're meeting with our technology department and doing some work over the next few days, that's something I can find out for sure. Right, and then the other one was, can Adobe Cloud be installed on more than one computer? Yeah, yes. The only thing is that you can't be logged into more than one computer. And that'll make more sense once you see it, unless you've already had Creative Cloud, but. Like if you're in my classroom and you log on to Creative Cloud on that workstation and then you go home but you didn't log off of the uh, Creative Cloud account in my classroom, it could cause some issues. But from wherever you're at, you can force a log off. So um, 
I don't know if that answers your question. You can have the software apps downloaded to multiple 